So I use Excel a little differently than most people. And when I show people these spreadsheets, I often get a response like, you shouldn't be using Excel for that. That's the, not the right way to use it. But the reality is for a lot of people, this is the right way to use it. Depending on your situation, sometimes the best place to build your reports is just right in Excel. You see, all this is possible because Excel has layers. You can stack shapes and images, text, charts all together, start creating kind of more complex designs. And it's really easy to do it. It's not using any kind of new custom coded plugins, anything like that. It's just standard features. We just never really get taught how to use them for some reason. So there's just a few basic principles that go into building stuff like this in Excel. Obviously it takes some time to master these, but the underlying concepts are actually pretty straightforward. And once you understand what they are, I think something clicks and people really quickly level up the type of reporting that they're doing. So you start with data. Everything starts with data and preferably data that's in a nicely structured, clean table like this. When we talk about the table being clean, we mean it has a single header, no merged cells. Each column is consistent data of the same type. Essentially, you want the format you would use if you were going to turn this into a pivot table or start building charts out of it. Typically, what I do then is create a series of pivot tables to pull out the metrics or the series of data that I want. In this case, we've got sales over time, month by month. We've got profit over time. We've got stuff broken down into categories. And, and pivot tables, they do take a little while to understand. There really is no better use of your time than learning how to use pivot tables in Excel. It just opens up a whole world of possibilities. Then for the dashboard presentation itself, essentially all we're doing is making charts out of our data and adding our metrics into text boxes. So there's two little tricks to this. One is if you insert a text box into Excel and you go to the formula bar, you can hit equals and you can point it to any cell you want. And then whenever that cell changes, the text box will change to match it. That's kind of our first step for getting data out of this grid layout that's a little boring and can be kind of hard to interpret and bringing it into a layout that allows us a little more flexibility for design and kind of presentation. Then the next big part of this is just learning to customize your charts. People see this stuff that I post and they kind of go, wow, how in the heck do you do all this in Excel? But Excel has a very impressive set of chart customization filters built right in. I typically go through a pretty straightforward procedure with my charts. First thing I do is I remove the background color and the background outline. You'll see that under the formatting pane under fill and border. I then update all my fonts to just make sure that they're readable and the right size and that they're a font that matches my design. I click in, I make sure my series colors match whatever my theme is, and I just make sure all the chart elements I want are in there, and then I've made sure things like grid lines aren't too dark or too bright and everything just kind of matches. There's lots of little tricks you can learn in this, and it's really just an exercise in going through each of the chart types, looking at all of the different chart elements that can be added in, and then for each chart element, looking at the different ways you can customize it. You don't have to be a master designer for this. Really, the important thing is just learning what options you have and how you can customize things, because most people have never really explored that before. The other big part of this is the strategic use of shapes. So if you notice this background here, it's a big rounded rectangle with another rounded rectangle on top with even more rounded rectangles on top of that. And that's how I've created this layout. If we jump over to re the reorder object screen here, you can kind of see how this breakdown happens. Each section's kind of blocked out with its own shape. If you've ever created a layout in PowerPoint, you kind of are gonna be familiar with this process. You're just dropping in shapes and customizing them. It works literally exactly the same as PowerPoint, same user interface and everything. But the real secret here, this is really part of all information design, gra graphic design, visual design, data visualization. Take the time to align things. If you select two shapes in Excel, hold shift and select two of them or any two objects really, you'll see under the shape format or any of the format tabs that there is the option to align things. You can align top, left, middle, make things distributed evenly. If you just take the time to make sure there's even spacing between all your shapes, do your best to be consistent in the sizing of things, right? You see these three elements, each one's the same size. You see this element here, the two elements next to it are both exactly half the size of this, so they all add up to be relatively even and aligned. Just doing a little bit of work to work on that alignment and spacing is gonna make your work way more professional and just way better overall. I think last but not least is learning to get comfortable with slicers and timelines too. If you wanna have a dynamic dashboard that updates in real time as you select different data, slicers are what's going to make that possible and if you need to really quickly generate a version of your report that 
shows individual regions or departments or categories of products. This is a really quick, easy way to do it. It's not difficult to learn to use slicers and timelines. There's a million tutorials out there, but the process is very straightforward. And when you put all that together, you can start to create really cool, really beautiful visual design, stuff that really doesn't look anything like Excel. And this isn't just about making it look cool. It's also about communicating more effectively with your data. You need to keep your audience's attention. You need things to look professional. All of these things affect how people interpret the data you put in front of them. Frankly, just a little bit of design work is gonna make your work stand out. I'm always surprised at what a huge missed opportunity this is for people in their careers. If you want one of the most effective methods for really impressing people with the reports you're already building, just do a pass through of your old reports and update the visual designs. Match your brand colors, maybe include your brand logo, get everything aligned, add in a few visuals, get your colors consistent, get your fonts updated, get everything aligned properly. And you're gonna be amazed at how impressed people will be with the work you're doing. Let me know what questions you have. I've got a bunch of tutorials back on my profile that go really deep on how to do this stuff from start to finish. Check out the playlist section on my profile if you want those. If you want the templates like the one you see behind me, the free templates, I have a newsletter where I literally just send out free templates. Nothing else, no spam, no nothing, just free templates. If you got topics you want me to go deeper on, if you run into problems, you got questions that you want me to make videos about, let me know. I love to hear your ideas. And thank you all for tuning in and watching. This has been a wild journey. I never ever expected that making videos about Excel while holding my cat would be the thing that catches on, but here we are. So thanks for joining me for the ride. Have a good one. See you soon.